Hey everybody, welcome back to part two of our tutorial series on rendering architectural interiors in Indigo via iClone. In the first tutorial, basically we did all the groundwork. Uh, we uh, categorized our, uh, our uh, scene from SketchUp into subprops, and we did uh, some merge identicals so we had a more efficient and streamlined scene. Uh, basically did all the groundwork and now we're ready to do all this, all the rendering, all the beautifying and stuff uh, in Indigo with the settings in iClone. So let's go ahead and get started first on the exterior lighting. So we covered this briefly in the first tutorial, so this might be a review for some of you. Um, so what I'm going to do is just go ahead and go to my Indigo tab. We want to have some light streaming in through the window. So we can actually align that to our key light. If we go down to our light um, section here in the scene uh, tab, we'll select our key light, press the forward slash key, and set this key light to somewhere like here because we want to have light streaming in through the window. And that looks fine and dandy right there. And if we want to light up uh, our scene in iClone, we can select our rim light and then use the forward slash key to you know, move the rim light over here so we can actually see what's going on um, in our iClone scene. So then we'll just uh, zoom out a little bit. And what I want to do is go to the Indigo tab, Indigo settings, select Indigo Send in Sky, and we're going to align it to the key light, the first light that we adjusted there. And then we want to make sure we disable our uh, directional key lights and rim lights. And so basically when this renders in Indigo, we're only going to be rendering the um, Sun and Sky, which is a preset of Indigo, and that's going to be from the direction of this key light in iClone. So let's go ahead and uh, do that. But first what I want to do is set my camera up as well. So let's go to the Modify tab. I'm going to press the U hotkey, and that will take you to your uh, camera settings. Uh, toggle between your camera settings and your last uh, selected prop. So for this light, for example, so let's go ahead and choose like a 35 millimeter uh, focal length. That'll uh, make our scene a little bit larger uh, like we did before in the previous tutorial. And let's go ahead and just give this one a quick render and see what it looks like. So we should have light streaming in through the window and a nicely lit scene right here. So this is kind of maybe an evening scene or something like that. Uh, that looks pretty fine. So let's go ahead and go back into iClone and let's talk about uh, emissive lighting now. So we're going to create some emissive lights in our scene. And what I'm going to do is start with this lamp on the left hand side. So what I'm going to do is create my own light, my own light bulb, so to speak. So let's go to the content tab, props, and in my template uh, tab right here, I'm going to go to the props folder, 3D blocks, and we should have a simple ball. So I'm just going to click and drag that into my scene. And then what I can do is use the R hotkey to make it a little bit smaller because we want to be able to fit it inside this lampshade here. So let's go ahead and do that, make it smaller. And then the easiest way to align it to this lamp is just to use this Align To tool, or you can also press Control L, and you can select the lamp and just go X, Y, and Z. So it'll be aligned on all of those axes. And then press the W hotkey and move it up right here. We can even maybe make it a little bit smaller. Pressing the R hotkey again. I think that should be fine right there. Okay, let's keep that right about there in our lamp. And now what I want to do is make sure that this light, uh, this ball, I guess, emits light. We can even rename it. We can just go back here and double click and rename it uh, light bulb just to keep things consistent. And then what I want to do is go into Indigo here and let's just uh, bring this out a little bit. And we want to make sure that we have auto convert assigned. And then what I want to do is go to base emission and pump up my base emission to something like, you know, 45K or something like that, or maybe 40,000. And that should be a very decent um, uh, emissive light. Let's go to our color here as well and just select the color. We can make it a little bit more, a little bit warmer, like a more tan, yellowish color. And then just press OK. And so now the reason I'm doing this is because we're going to create more of a gradient light. Um, if I just assign this entire lamp as an emissive light, it would be a very sharp uh, light, which I'll talk about in just a moment. So then what I want to do is I want to make this lampshade here uh, semi-transparent. Now to do that, I need to select my lamp in the scene hierarchy, use my picker tool here, and pick the outside of the lamp, which is actually already selected. It's this first item right here. Let's uh, get that a little bit larger so we can see the, uh, the mesh called 0F3 shade, uh, yada yada. Then what I want to do is select Assign Indigo Shader, and I'm going to use uh, Glossy Transparent uh, for this one. So it's going to be like a kind of a frosted glass. And we can just leave the settings at the default there. And let's go ahead and take a look at the way that this renders. Uh, what you'll see is a, a nice uh, gradient uh, blend from the center of the light um, out to the outside there. So that's only possible with uh, the um, semi-transparent exterior, and you get the light bulb in the middle. 
Uh, let's go ahead and back to this scene and maybe uh, stop this scene for now. There you go, get that nice looking scene over there. Let's go ahead and stop that. So again, this is the nice uh, gradient that we get um, by using that technique. So let's go ahead back into iClone and I'm going to make a couple of copies of that light bulb. Now the cool thing about copying these emissive lights is they'll maintain all the properties that you assigned in Indigo. So I'm going to select the light bulb here and then I'm just going to simply control, click and drag and that'll create another light bulb with the same properties over here as you can see. And let's just uh, take that light bulb and let's assign it to these lights up here. So I'm going to go and uh, press control L at the end, that's the align. I'm going to uh, align it to light 01 on the X, Y, and Z axes. There we go. So that's signed right up there. Control, click and drag, make another copy. And let's control L and assign it to light 02 on the X, Y, and Z axes. And a couple more times. Again, control, click and drag to make a copy. And then control L to align to. And we can align it to light 03, X, Y, and Z. There we go. And one more time. This is a really simple and easy way to create numerous light bulbs in your scene. So it's control L, light 04, on the X, Y, and Z axes. There we go. All right, so now we have those uh, four lights. And let's take a look at what that looks like. We'll give it a quick, uh, quick render, maybe from an angle like this here. There we go. Let's go back and uh, stop this one here. You can see that nice um, gradient light effect that we have after it's replaced by this other um, scene that we're rendering here. So yeah, we have the, the lights in our scene, um, you know, shining off the wall there. This one's shining off the semi-transparent curtain, which uh, creates quite, quite a nice effect. We haven't assigned the glass on this yet, so we might see that later. But uh, so all I want to do now is just create um, emissive lights out of these two large lights on the top there. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm just going to go back. Um, let's actually just stop this for now. And let's go back into iClone. And so I'm going to tell you, I'll show you the difference between the emissive light um, when it's sharp like this and the gradient light that we had in the lamp. So if, if I don't shine it through another uh, medium, like a semi a frosted glass medium, this is what it's going to look like. So let's select our top light, 01. And let's just select the outer part right here. And that is the trauma diffuse backside. Let's select base emission, pump that up to like uh, 40,000 is fine. And let's do the same thing for top light 02 as well. So uh, again, base emission around uh, 40,000. We still have the same object selected. So then what you'll see here, when I, once I render this one, you'll see the edges around these lights are a lot sharper. And, uh, you know, depending on the effect you're going for, that could work. Uh, alternately, we, what we could do is we could put light bulbs inside of those as well. But I just wanted to show you the difference between, uh, you know, putting a light bulb inside a semi-transparent uh, medium as opposed to having it uh, out like this. So this scene is, you know, very well lit. Now we have a very uh, highly lit scene. It would be great for, uh, you know, pre-sale condominium or pre-construction -pre condos or houses or something like that. Um, so let's go ahead and uh, stop that for now and close that down. Now what I want to talk about is glow lighting. So you can actually use glow maps as well from uh, simple images to create uh, lighting in your scene as well. I think these ones are actually a little bit high. Let's take these down to about uh, 35 and uh, top light 01. Take that down to about 35 as well. There we go. And let's take a look at our television now. So I'm going to focus on the TV. Let's press the TV. Uh, click on the TV. You can press A, S, D, and F to focus on it from different angles. Uh, the S key in this case is the one that we want to choose. And then what I want to do is choose the screen. Again, I renamed it in the first tutorial, so it's handy to, you know, uh, recognize. Or I can just, you know, simply use the picker tool again and pick it. And that'll be uh, chosen right there. So what I need to do in the modify uh, tab now is go to materials. I guess we need to pick it again there when you have the screen. And there, it currently has this diffuse map, this uh, JPEG file right here. What I'm going to do is just replace that. I'm going to double click on the channel and select this, these color bars here. And then I'm going to do the same thing for my glow channel. So I'm going to select, uh, double click on my glow channel, select the same uh, material or the same texture map. And you can see that we have the glow map creating a certain amount of glow. And we can increase or decrease the amount of strength of that glow in iClone. Now what I want to do is I want to like uh, kind of align these a little bit differently on the UV uh, settings. Uh, what, what you want to do, since you have two channels, you want to make sure that you select affect all channels uh, before you do any modifications here. So let's just go ahead and do something like uh, 1.5, uh, maybe uh, tiling it twice on the U channel and uh, 1.5 on the V. 
and then we get something like that looks good enough for me let's uh, take down that glow a little bit i think uh yeah maybe 55 is fine and let's take a gander at uh what this looks like when we uh, render it out so we should have a nice uh, glow emitting from the television screen you can see it that uh it's really lit up and you can um i think we have some fairly high light in our scene from the top lights and everything but you can see that uh you know this is lit up well beyond the uh light beyond it or the uh materials on the wall and everything like that so uh that's pretty much how you can use glow lights uh or glow maps to create emissive light in your scene as well and it's you know really handy i could take like a, a still screen from the simpsons or something like that and and put it on here as well uh do a, do a similar uh, concept so that's how glow maps come in handy let's talk now about uh downloading and assigning different materials in your scene so what i'm going to do is just go back into iclone here and we're going to focus on this uh, carpet that we have. And what I want to do is actually steal one of these light bulbs. So let's take our original light bulb. Let's control, click and drag, create a whole other light bulb here. And let's bring it down to the carpet area because what we're going to do is we're going to assign an indigo shader uh, from, the, from their website to this carpet. And you can see we get some fairly nice texture, although we could find something nicer uh, in indigo. So let's go ahead uh, on the Indigo website. So let's go ahead and do this. Uh, what I'm going to do is select my carpet and then in the Indigo tab, go down to the bottom here or the middle. And what you want to do is go to the online material database. And this will re uh, request that you sign in. If you are, if you, if you already signed into your Indigo account, uh, you won't have to worry about this. Uh, what I'm going to do is go to the textile section over here. And then we have a number of different uh, textiles, you know, uh, blue silk, fabric pattern, um, carbon fiber, uh, whatever we have. And we have this dirty old looking carpet as well. I'm gonna choose this bumpy carpet. I like this one here. So we'll just select this. And then all I have to do is uh, download. And uh, thanks to author Halu Perido, we can just simply uh, download this and use it um, royalty free in our scenes. So let's go ahead back to iClone. And then what I wanna do is open the IGM materials. And in my downloads folder, I have that purple carpet too. So we'll just load that up. Nothing will change in iClone. Let's go ahead and give this a render in Indigo. We can actually just uh, stop rendering our TV. You can see the glow faintly off the edge before the other window rudely came in and interrupted us. So that's the uh, glow map there. And here we go. So now let's take a look at the uh, carpet. We'll give that a minute to render actually so we can see the detail a bit more since it's still a bit grainy. And let's go back to iClone. And let's uh, start ass assigning the uh, glass in our scene. So what I want to do is focus on this vase right here. So what I'm going to do is select the, the vase plant object that I have. And you can see if I go to the modify tab, the materials, um, currently what we have, if I just select the uh, material on the outer side, it's just this diffuse map. It's just this um, corrugated shiny diffuse map uh, .jpg, And the opacity is set to like 30. That's why it looks uh, semi-transparent. So down here, the opacity, uh, you can change that to uh, you know, full opacity or whatever. So what we want to do is we want to try to recreate this um, in iClone. Now, if I rendered it this way um, with this just semi-transparent um, opacity here, we won't have much of a reflection. It won't be shiny like we want glass to be. Let's actually take this light so we can actually see a little bit better when we do render in Indigo. There we go. And zoom in a little bit. There we go. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to make sure this looks like it's you know a shiny uh, glass material. So let's go ahead and select the vase again. Uh, make sure in Indigo we have the material, the correct material selected by using our picker tool. And then let's go assign Indigo shader and let's assign it as a specular glass. Now in this case, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go ahead and render this with an architecture glass and a single face setting uh, on. And you'll see uh, why this is not really recommended for thick glass like vases and stuff. You can see that we can, we can barely see you know, any sort of uh, material any sort of medium uh, because architecture glass especially with single face is used for like very thin type glass like uh like windows or even just bubbles in your scene um with a not very thick uh single face has no thickness but uh, architecture glass is fairly good at you know capturing a reflection and absorption of light so we can see you know the, the reflections there really nicely and some some light play from the uh, tv along the uh, right hand side there as well but what we want to do is we want to make that Thicker. So let's go ahead and we can actually do this in Indigo as well. Pick material, pick our uh, vase there. 
And let's go ahead, take off single face, and take off architecture glass. And now you can see we have uh, some actual color because we have an absorption layer and the color of the absorption layer is being absorbed. If we want to change that absorption layer color, we can do that as well by changing something like a light, uh, you know, a light blue, and it'll be pretty dark. So what you want to do, maybe if you want a, you know, a lighter vase, a lighter color, you'll have to actually adjust your gain. So let's go ahead and adjust our gain to like something like two, and you can see we get that nice aqua looking um, blue vase right there. Um, so if you increase the gain, that's going to increase the uh, transparency or lessen the absorption of the of the color. And you can see we get uh, the light shining over here. We even get some nice uh, blue glow along the wall over there. So the light is shining through that vase, and um, some of the blue is uh, over here on on the uh, on the wall as well. And uh, we have our marijuana book in the uh, left hand corner there. So that's kind of cool. Um, that's how you uh, really can. Uh, create different types of lighting. Uh, so what I want to do is for the actual windows in our scene, I want to use architecture glass. So let's go ahead into this uh, area over here. And I have these windows selected right here, this window 01. I can move it out like that. And you can see the windows contain the frame still. So let's press Control Z, um, bring it back to the original position. And on this um, section here, on these windows, I purposely forgot to merge identical. And you can see now we have wood.jpg, wood.jpg. We have, you know, every single uh, window frame has the material because I did not merge identical when I was in 3D Exchange, which I uh, mentioned in the first tutorial. So what we have to do now is we don't want the wood because the wood is the actual frame. I want to select all the color materials. Control click, control click, um, control click. And until I get all of them, I don't want the wood.jpg. Uh, control click all of these, assign Indigo Shader, and just assign Specular Glass. And then we want to go to Architecture Glass and Single Face to create that nice thin glass that creates a nice reflection. And let's go to the Windows 2 over here and do the exact same thing. So Color Material, Control Click, Control Click. Oops, this time we have to go up. So again, just Control Click to select all the materials. Once in your Indigo tab, assign Indigo Shader, Specular Glass. And we want to make sure we have architecture glass and single face both selected. So then we have all that assigned and I can do the same thing with my table. I can maybe do the same thing with my table as I had with my vase or I can select the uh, the table and uh, we don't have to worry about the green color here now because we're going to totally replace that. So let's select the table. Let's select the top material which is this one right here. Assign in to go shader and let's go to specular glass for that one as well. And we can leave it at that current setting and uh, give this one a quick render and uh, see what that looks like. So let's, uh, I'll tab over to uh, Indigo. Oh, we have too many things going. All right, so there was our carpet uh, that I mentioned before. So we get that nice uh, detail on the carpet, which you can see, a uh, nice uh, detailed texture. Uh, you're not going to pay too much attention to the carpet normally, but if you wanted to, you know, that's how you can download the materials from the Indigo Material Database and use them in your scene. And if you want to change the color of this carpet, you can do that as well, which by picking a material, Pick the carpet and then choose your color down here. Let's choose something like a nice uh, aqua. I'm using too much aqua. You can actually manually use your sliders as well. Create a nice uh, gray or brownish carpet there by using those sliders as well. And that would be a nice uh, color carpet. Let's just go ahead and close that for now. I just wanted to show you the uh, possibility of changing the colors since purple may be a little bit of a gaudy color. So here's our nice uh, table that we've used. And you can see we have a little bit of uh, um, opacity in here because we did not use architecture glass. Uh, we didn't use the single face. So this is kind of the effect that we want to go for, you know, for this table. We don't want it to be too clear. We want it to be more like the more like the vase. And this section around the edge of the table, that's actually a separate material. I've just kept that uh, black. So let's go ahead and uh, pick the table material. We can take a look at it. Again, transparent. And we get the nice reflection of the of the windows off that table as well. Um, it's very, uh, very glassy, I guess you can say, um, but we have a nice uh, reflection off the table, and it's uh, fairly, uh, it's not too, too, not too transparent for our needs. So we'll just go ahead, let that render. I think how many do we have rendering here? Oh, there's our vase again. So we get the nice. You can see the more detailed blue glow um, or uh, light uh, shining through the vase off the wall there. Let's go ahead and just stop that for now, and let's go back into iClone. And I'm going to show you something that may happen in a few scenes. Uh, what happens uh, occasionally is that 
certain scenes from SketchUp especially may have a little bit of a strange issue on the on the certain faces where they uh, are not um, you know ideally put together shall we say let's go ahead and take uh, I think I deleted no oh, here it is here's our light over here let's go ahead and take a look at uh, this wall over here for example um, so I'm gonna, we're going to talk a little bit now about uh, assigning materials uh, and so I'm going to take a look at this wall first and say for example I wanted to change this wall using a substance material uh, to use a substance material on this wall let's go to our content tab into our media down here and to the materials folder and I have this substance power 200 pack I'm going to choose something from architecture and street there's a lime uh, L limestone blocks right here let's just click and drag that onto the wall and we get that nice limestone uh, surface right there it's tiled quite nicely uh, by a total fluke and that also applies to the other wall over here uh, because they're actually attached the way this was put together so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just go ahead and give this a render let's make this light a little bit larger just in case that'll increase the range of the light uh, by making it a little bit larger so let's go ahead and give this a quick render here and we'll take a look at the materials on the uh, wall here and you'll see right off the bat that we have kind of a problem there's some overlapping material and the pattern is really weird now you may experience this um, if you watch our tutorial on rendering uh, vehicles we experienced this but in some cases you're not able to fix it so say for example I didn't want this uh, you know one face to be uh, present all I need to do is pick material normally I can pick the actual uh, material here the additional face and in the uh, material type, I can change it from Fong all the way down to Null. And that will make it invisible. So uh, everything looks good, 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 until we start to get a little less grainy. And we can see that there's little cracks in the walls. And this is kind of uh, basically just because of the way it was put together. And uh, basically what we're doing is we're seeing through the wall um, in these cracks. So there's really no way to fix this um, at the moment. Uh, so what we can do is we can just go ahead, stop this, and we're going to create a totally new wall. And the easiest way to do this is I like to use the uh, tessellation uh, templates in the props uh, section over here. So we'll go to uh, props um, down to the uh, bottom, I think, tessellation templates. There we go. And we have displace 01, just your basic uh, displacement plane. So I like to use these because they are uh, single sided, um, they have a fairly high. Uh, poly count if I press control R you can see that uh, this is our mesh so we have a fairly um, you know high poly mesh for a single plane let's just uh, press control R and take that back and what I want to do is uh, you know place it right on top of this wall so it's nice and thin it's paper thin let's just use the e-hockey and I'm gonna go to my modify tab to the uh, parameters right here and we'll rotate it and you can see our values in the transform uh, section to the right are changing we want it to be at 90 degrees on the y-axis so it's completely perpendicular to the floor. Uh, so let's go ahead and press the W hotkey then and kind of get it uh, closer to the wall. We want to put it right in front of the wall here. Mm, there we go. That should be fine. And let's move it over to right at the edge. And then what we can do is we want to change the pivot point because we want to scale this wall all the way, whoops, uh, all the way to the other end here. So let's go ahead and do that really quick. Go down to uh, our pivot points here. Where are we? Oh, there we go. Uh, let's set this one to quick set. I think it's front and the bottom left. There we go. So now we have our pivot point at the bottom uh, left. And if you press the R hot key to scale, and we can then scale it over here and by using our uh, red um, axis, we can scale it up as well. So, and you're scaling it from the uh, left instead of trying to scale it from the middle. And I think that's fine. I think we scaled it far enough on the, yep. That looks fine and dandy, so we have ourselves a new wall. And then we can just go ahead to our media, and we can take uh, that limestone or, you know, whatever we want. We'll just use that limestone again for now. Uh, L, um, can never find that thing. And apply it to that uh, wall. And then again, here you may have to uh, adjust the uh, UV mapping here. I think we may have to move it out first a little bit as well. There we go. So it's actually a little too close to the wall as well. So I think here we're, we're good. And let's go ahead and tile this a little bit. So... We can actually go to our materials and this particular substance has you can change the amount of bricks on the X and the Y axes so we can do something like that we can change the uh, you know brick offset or change the age of the bricks um, anything like that and then all we need to do is uh, you know control click and drag do the old control click and drag 
and you can see that we don't have a face on this side it's a one-sided material so uh, you know fairly easy just to turn that around by pressing the E hotkey and zoop, doing this and then um, making sure that it's at a right angle uh, there we go 180 on the x-axis and then we want to put that into place along the other side as well so let's just go ahead and do that there we go I think that should be fine and dandy where it is we don't have to worry about this area because we're not going to be really rendering that just make sure it's in front of our uh, sofa whoops there we go I think that should be fine right there and of course we can move our sofa forward if we'd like as well on one last little part here which is the uh, pillows so you can see the pillows are a little bit jagged uh, in icon even though we you know did some smooth normal earlier on so what I can do is just uh, try and select those pillows here let's go to our scene tab and where are the pillows uh, they're part of the sofa there we go I made them as a sub prop of the sofa so we can select those pillows and go to our indigo tab here and what we can do is uh, select both the materials here so uh, again shift select both these materials and what I want to do is first let's move this uh, light over here actually so we can we'll be able to see this render a little bit better uh, I'm going to see the details on the pillows so something like that and what I want to do now is just select all the pillows again um, and select the materials in the material editor and then what I want to do is go down here and we want to use uh, subdivision and subdivision is going to smooth out the meshes of these pillows uh, currently we have it at smooth normal if I change this from smooth normal to uh, subdivision high what will happen is we'll see these pillows um, become a little less jagged we'll still have some a little bit of jaggedness on the edge there because that's just the way the meshes are but we will have a much smoother result in the end. So let's go ahead and give this a render here. And this one you'll be able to see the limestone a little bit better. And actually what I might want to do here is actually increase the resolution of that limestone as well. But the purpose of this one, you can see that we have the, uh, the pillows are much smoother than they are in iClone. So notice they're fairly smooth here, except for the uh, you know, edge here on the bottom, which can't really be helped. Um, we just use the subdivision, but we, don't have, we no longer have these uh, you know, sharp edges along the other ends as well so if you find you know some whoops uh, some organic shapes that are uh, you know a little too sharp in your render you can always try to do, use the subdivision and we're gonna definitely have to change this uh, limestone the result isn't looking as good as I expected let's select the wall there and let's go back it's called the displacement 001 let's go to our materials we can change this from uh, output size 512 to 512 to 2048 so we can get much better detail there you go so you can see the detail change right there and we'll be able to notice that in uh in indigo much nicer as well let's increase the amount of bricks let's remember these numbers 27 and uh 21 just so we can remember them for the next uh wall now the last thing i want to show you is basically how you can make things a bit shinier so we're going to focus now on this entertainment unit mainly the uh, black part here and what i'm going to do is just in mo in the modified tab select the material select the black material here make sure it's selected um, and then let's go down to the uh, values down here now in material settings you can see we have diffuse ambient and specular all black now this is uh, normally it's fairly common when you're exporting from uh, SketchUp what you want to do to have a specular highlight is change your specular color to something like a white color and your ambient color can stay black and your diffuse is whatever color you choose just make sure your specular color is white and then what you want to do is uh, increase your specular value. So you can see you want to increase the specular value. We're getting that sort of uh, specular increase of specularity on the bottom. And this will look a lot better, uh, you know, once we render it in indigo. But if we increase the specular value to something super high and decrease the glossiness to something like this, let's go ahead and give that a quick render in indigo and uh, see what that looks like. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back into iClone and we're going to compare this to using a uh, metal sh metallic shader um, in uh, indigo. So you can see right now with this uh, specular value that we put inside of iClone, we have quite a decent specular highlight um, on, on our, on our uh, entertainment unit here, and it's very metallic looking. Uh, to compare that, we can actually go back into iClone, and let's set these, uh, all these settings back to normal. So let's take our specular all the way back down to zero, and the glossiness doesn't really matter anymore back there. And let's go into Indigo, and let's select that black material again right there, which is the first one. Let's assign indigo shader and let's assign the Fong metal shader right here. And we'll just close that down and then we'll give this one a render. And uh, what you'll see with this one, 
Let's just go back into the other ones and stop those from rendering right now. We don't really need this one anymore. Oops. Okay, so what you'll see here is you'll see the uh, metal. This is the metallic uh, shader, that uh, shader preset in iClone. And you can see this one's a fairly, fairly nice specular value. So we get the reflection of the TV off of the uh, counter there. And it looks, you know, very, um, you know, like a very shiny plastic, a very glossy plastic, uh, or else like a whatever sort of material is very reflective like that, a quartz countertop or something like that. Uh, very reflective surface anyways. So that's using the metallic uh, shader, the metal shader in Indigo. I'm going to close this one down right now. That's the uh, one that we had before. We can close that down and then also we'll close our uh, sofa one down. It's still rendering over here. And uh, so this one here, this is the uh, iClone shader. And uh, then we go here. Or this, sorry, this is the iClone uh, shader right here. You can see the, uh, the highlight from the uh, TV. The light from the TV is much more uh, spread out. The light from the TV is much more uh, distributed and not as uh, as focused. So there's not as much, uh, the glossiness is a little bit higher. Now if we decrease the glossiness, we'd have a more focused uh, specular highlight right here, which is what we have when we go into the uh, indigo shader one. So this one, the reflection is a lot more focused, a uh, lot more, sh lot sharper. And this is what you get when you use the uh, Fong Metal shader in the indigo plugin for iClone versus just adjusting the specular and uh, whatever values. So that's about it for this tutorial, guys. There's a lot more to explore in the wild world of uh, indigo rendering and architecture. We may have future tutorials. If you're interested in those, make sure you leave a comment in the comment section and let us know. Uh, you can email us at developer at realusion.com to request any sort of tutorials as well. So thank you for watching and I'll catch you next time.